Hello everyone and welcome to Texas Tech University's Project Lab 1 tutorial videos. I am one of the tutors for this course. My name is Daniel. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the IR sensor available in the sock room. It's the Palulu GP2Y0D810. This little black one's uh, shown in the tank picture. Uh, let me go ahead and go to the data sheet. So, start off with any uh, new component. You want to go to the data sheet. So the IR sensor available in the sock room is this G Pololo GP2Y0D810Z0F. Uh, so opening up the data sheet, uh, it's just a little black piece, it looks like that. Um, and it comes on a little green uh, IC chip. So you see there's a full picture of it. Usually they come um, in a little pink bag and you do have to somewhat assemble them so going back look at its images there we go so it comes just like this picture right here and it comes with both of these types of pins and you do have to solder the pins onto the holes right here so that's the first thing I would like to mention that you do have to solder whichever pins you are using onto the green board. Uh, so this IR sensor I is a sophisticated component. It has a lot of stuff inside of it. Um, it's not just an IR sensor. If you look here, it does have a uh, so it has a light emitter and then a uh, IR processing circuit and then it has several other components that uh, makes your output pretty one and zero um, a logical one and zero so the component itself does have a lot of components that make a lot of the signal processing uh, easy for us as lab one students so uh, looking at this data sheet you see that the voltage required for it to operate is 2.7 to 6.2 volts and typical uh, consumption current is about 5 milliamps so that in mind the first thing you want to think about is what you will use to power it uh, a low current device like this uh, is in the range that the basis board can power so the basis board does put out a 3.3 volt which is in this range and again this current will not uh, drain the basis board too much uh, if you continue looking at the data sheet you see that it does have three pins so as we saw in the picture you have those three pins that you will input so more recommending settings here text tells you about uh, how breaking the plane will affect the sensor so if you are moving it you want to make sure you move it in this orientation and not this orientation. So let me look back at a picture of it. On the back of the pin itself here is a good picture. So you see that the pin itself says or the holes on the green board tell you the ground pin, the VN pin, and the out pin. So the out is your signal, VN is your 2.7 to 6.2, and ground of course is your ground. So now that we sort of understand how this device works, let's go ahead and switch over to our camera view. Here I have uh, this device already soldered together, and I have it placed on our breadboard here. So, um, if you see on the back, I've already attached the pins. Uh, I just put it in three rows so that I can apply the power it needs on the back. So again, uh, it does, this video is for both the basis two and basis three boards. So whichever one you're using, uh, 
they all have the VCC and ground, and they both provide the 3.3 volts out of the VCC. So, um, just to show you, this is still programmed with the uh, program with the IPS sensor. So, if you look at the IPS sensor video, both of these uh, boards are programmed with that same module that is just an inverter. It takes whatever it is in the pin and inverts it onto an LED. Uh, with that said, let's go ahead and see what the signal of this sensor does. So looking at the back, I will hook up the VCC in the appropriate pin and the ground in the appropriate pin. Um, back and now I will put the output which is the farthest left pin and we'll display it on my multimeter so output of the sensor is going to the multimeter <laughs> and we'll power the baseboard by the 5 volt regulator right here so 5 volt regulator goes to our basis board to power it off of these uh, gray and white jumpers and the output VCC uh, goes to the sensor and the ground goes to the sensor. So turning this on we see that the output of the sensor is a 3.3 when nothing is detected. So there's nothing detected um, so in the back there's a little LED as you see when I put my finger in front of the LED the voltage drops to a zero and when I move it it goes up to a 3.3 so uh, like our IPS sensor or capacitive inductive sen or capacitive proximity sensor this signal does come out inverted so out of the sensor, it shows a 1 when it does not detect anything, and a 0 when uh, it does detect something. So a 0 when it detects something, and a 1 when it does not. So with that in mind, uh, we can use the same module we created for the IPS sensor, which is just an inverted module. And <coughs> just to show you here on the IPS sensor, I mean on the basis 3 board so again we have our common ground which is ground provided to the sensor uh, VCC provided to the sensor and now we take the output of the sensor and take it to our pin uh, J1 which was already programmed on this board which controls this LED right there so if uh, as you see, if the sensor detects something, the LED also turns on on the basis board. So, as you see, we are passing the signal from this IR sensor to our basis board. And then you go ahead and stop or change course or whatever uh, the appropriate action is. But I just wanted to show you that applying the 3.3 volts from the VCC of the of the basis board and the ground of the basis board, you can take the signal back into uh, the basis board the same way we did with the inductive proximity or the capacitive proximity sensor. All right, so that shows you that it works on the basis three board. So now switching over to the basis two. I can do the same exact thing. This is still the program from um, the IPS video. So plugging that in, giving it a common ground. Again, it doesn't have to be, uh, it can be whichever ground. It doesn't have to be the one that we're taking the signal into. And here's the VCC. So 5 volts. Our 5 volt regulator coming it on to the basis board to power it, and then 3.3 um, coming off the basis board to power the uh, 
IR sensor. The output of the sensor can then go into B2, I believe, which turned on or controlled this LED right here. So again, we can turn that on and see that uh, as the sensor detects something, it turns on the LED on the basis 2 board. So again, this program, it's still the same program as the IPS uh, sensor video. So it's just an inverter taking the signal going into this pin and inverting it onto the LED. So as I said before, uh, the, this sensor, this IR sensor, is putting out a uh, one, when it, a logical one, when it does not detect anything, and it goes down to a zero when it detects something. Therefore, we can use our inverting um, module that we had created for the IPS sensor and go ahead and move, proceed with our projects that way. So that's it for this video. Just wanted to show you that the IR sensor is similar to your IPS sensor, except that you don't have to worry about the signal coming out uh, at a wrong voltage if you provide the 3.3 volts. So this sensor does provide uh, the output will be the voltage that you provide input. So if you take an input of 3.3, the output would be 3.3. If you take a 5.5 5 volt input, the output will be 5 volt, and so forth, so on. So again, that's another reason why it's good to power it using the 3.3 from either breadboard and uh, programming it that way or powering it that way. All right, well, I hope you learned something in this video, and I'll plan to show you more in future videos.